Coaches, ask the inevitable question about DeAndre Hopkins because he is a free agent now. You're allowed to talk about him, even though Bill Belichick's position was, I don't talk about anybody who's not on the team. You're allowed to when he's a free agent. And DeAndre Hopkins has been a free agent for three days now. There hasn't been any clear indication of anything happening, which tells me whatever he's looking for, Miles, whatever he wants, whatever his number is, I don't think there's anybody, anybody out there that's willing to give it to him at this point. Not yet, but he did just hire an agent. So the agent still got to work, you know, work his magic a little bit. And I think today is kind of a big day in this whole thing because you get the money in cap relief from the post June one designations that you might've made when you cut some veterans. So I think that maybe we might start to see a little bit of movement when it comes to DeAndre Hopkins over the weekend. Yeah, but you still had you had the knowledge that it was going to happen. They could have reached an agreement in True. principle yesterday or the day before and signed it today. Everybody knows the money's going to hit today. I think it's more along the lines of he wants too much. And a point I made recently, teams have done this over and over and over again. They know all the shapes and sizes and personality types and levels of demands and who wants this and who wants that and how to deal with guys who maybe want more than they should. Teams know how to deal with guys who want too much. And one of the ways you deal with a guy who wants too much is you just wait and you wait and you yeah. let him process that I'm not going to get what I want. For him, it's a first. For the teams, it happens all the time. This is a guy who wants too much, so we're going to let it sit. We're going to let it percolate. We're going to let him hear from multiple teams, sorry, we just can't pay you what you want. And at the end Mm -hmm. of the day, the thinking is the Bills and Chiefs are going to end up in some sort of a mini tug of war. There are the latest odds that we've tracked down. The Bills continue to be the favorites with the Chiefs just behind. The Browns have muscled their way into the conversation. Last time I saw the odds over the weekend, it was Bills, Chiefs, Ravens, Jets in the top four. So the Browns and Lions are creeping into this. Mm -hmm. And the Browns, the Browns would make some sense when you look at their depth chart, but And you look at the fact that you're trying to get the most you can out of Deshaun Watson. Now, when Deshaun Watson publicly supported the idea of bringing in DeAndre Hopkins the other day, I still don't know whether that was just I'm being nice to my friend or I really, really want him. It'll be interesting if he really, really wants him, but the team won't give him to him. If he really, really wants him and they want to make this work, Miles, I'd like to think the team would do whatever they have to do to make this work for Deshaun Watson. Well, the the Browns are maybe in a better position than the Bills or the Chiefs to land DeAndre Hopkins, A, because of that connection that Deshaun Watson and DeAndre Hopkins have. I mean, this is a guy in DeAndre Hopkins that won or that was an all-pro, first-team all-pro two times with Deshaun Watson as a starting QB for a full season. I mean, you could kind of add 2017 in there, too, even though Deshaun Watson was hurt, so it's like two and a half. But that's one element of it. The other element is kind of with those post-June 1 designations, the Browns are going to have the second-most cap space available out of any team. So that's something where you can point to if you're Deshaun Watson and you really want this to happen, and you're like, guys, hey, we've got the most money but between, you know, the Bills, the Chiefs, and all these other teams that might want DeAndre Hopkins, and we are in a position to contend, and we are in a division with Cincinnati, who I think is a real Super Bowl contender, right? Baltimore, who should be a Super Bowl contender, especially now that Lamar Jackson is happy. You know, you've got Pittsburgh, who is always going to be in the mix under Mike Tomlin. They've proven that. So what are we going to do to have a bold move so that we are in the conversation and better in the mix? Now, you don't know how much DeAndre Hopkins is going to be available. I mean, yeah, he was hurt one year. You know, then he had the suspension. So that's two seasons in a row where he's not played a full season. But I think that just the simple fact if you could have DeAndre Hopkins opposite Amari Cooper, that's two really darn good receivers. And you add Elijah Moore to that. Donovan Peoples, Jones, somebody, another one's up and coming. It makes a lot of sense for the Browns to really strongly pursue this, I think. The reality is right now the Browns are just kind of a curiosity that no one's paying attention to. We don't know what they're going to be. We don't know what to expect. There's so many great teams around the Browns in their division, in the conference, that they're just kind of an afterthought. All of a sudden, if they get DeAndre Hopkins, they start hitting the radar screen and we start paying closer True. attention. Now, I don't know that they want that or not. Maybe their plan is we're going to surprise everybody this year. And, you know, they've got that very strong analytics mindset and strategies and, you know, does, 
DeAndre Hopkins, what what does he bring by way of what you're going to invest in him? And I could see some skepticism there because, you know, one of the points yeah. Sims made earlier this week, he's just basically a very large slot receiver at this point. He's not going to run by people. He's not going to command double coverage everywhere he goes. He's going to be a reliable safety blanket for a quarterback. And there are good reasons to have that, especially in Cleveland, where you're doing your best to make the quarterback more comfortable and thus more effective. It does make sense in Cleveland, but if the guy wants to chase a ring, and I think that's the big factor here, Mm -hmm. money versus likelihood of getting a ring. You go to Kansas City where the quarterback already has a security blanket and Travis Kelsey, but you're more likely to win a ring. Buffalo, better chance to win a ring. Kansas City, I think, needs that role, right? Uh, Juju Smith-Schuster was a huge, huge presence that they had at receiver last year, and he is now in New England. So I think, like, it, you know, we're talking about fits, whatever. Like, I think that DeAndre Hopkins would absolutely fit with the Kansas City Chiefs, and he would be another element to that offense that they might not have right now based on the receiving room that they have. I mean, I, I think Kadarius Tony should be good. Health questions, though, still there. Sky Moore, he is in a position to ascend more in his second year, and he made some big plays in the Super Bowl, too. But I think that having that veteran presence, that's another security blanket that's not Travis Kelsey, would definitely be huge for that offense. There was some reporting on Thursday linking him to both the Patriots and the Texans. Now, I remember he did the interview several weeks back where he was asked to respond with body language and facial expression with his interest level in a variety of teams. <laughs> Chiefs, Bills, yes. Jets, Patriots, no, he like looked off to the side. It was widely interpreted as no thank you. And we don't know what his relationship is with Bill O'Brien at this point, but Bill O'Brien was the coach when Hopkins got traded. So... Mm -hmm. There's something that went wrong or he still would have been in Houston playing for Bill O'Brien. And speaking of Houston, the Texans linked to Hopkins. And I can't imagine when you think back to some of the stuff that happened. And I know that that Bob McNair is deceased, but Bob McNair, some of the stuff that was said during the anthem and and the, the, the the I think Hopkins walked out after something that occurred and I don't know that he'd want to go back there. Cal McNair's running the show now. I just, I don't, unless they would really plunk down a ton of money. I I don't, I don't know why that would happen. And I don't know why they'd want it. It just seems like over done. We're trying to turn the page and move on from anything in the past that has been dysfunctional. And there's the message. The only message we have from DeAndre Hopkins, the old see no evil hear no evil, speak no evil. I guess that's his way of saying he ain't saying anything. In some order. Here, here, but, well, no, no. I guess the middle ones speak, but I don't see hands over the mouth, but I guess the middle ones speak. That's what that is. Yes. That's what what uh, the hands are over the mouth. You don't know your emojis very well. I can't see. I'm old. I can't see. I can't see that far. (laughs) Yesterday it was easier when I was in my office because the return was right in my face. Here it's like four (laughs) feet away. I can't see that far. But my eyes are fine. My eyes are fine because Um, I've memorized the eye chart. My physical's coming up in less than four weeks. I've memorized the eye chart. Uh, Read the last line that you can see. I remember as soon as I'm sitting in the chair, I'll remember what the the letters are and I'll pass with flying colors. Okay, so he's not saying anything. And, And again, it's difficult for him. I thought when this process first started in the offseason, when we believed he was going to be traded, the question was how much more than $19.45 million is he going to make this year? And then it became, wait, nobody wants to pay him his $19.45 million. Now what do they want to pay him, and what is he willing to accept? How little is he willing to accept to say yes to a team? And how much more is it going to take from a non-contender or a fringe contender to get him to not just end up with the Chiefs or the Bills? I mean, there's a reason that the Chiefs and the Bills were the only two teams that were linked to him. They're the two that reportedly spoke to the Cardinals about a trade. Now that Mm -hmm. he's available to anyone, who else is truly going to get into the mix and spend the kind of money? I think at the end of the day, it's going to be Chiefs versus Bills with both teams resisting the temptation to overpay to keep him away from the other team. I think it would be interesting if he were to go to the Bills. I mean, having him with Stephon Diggs, I would really give uh, Josh Allen a good target. And they got their new tight end. It's a rookie that they seem to be really high on, too. And, you know, he'll be playing outside a little bit and not just in line. So I think that they 
are in a position to say, yeah, we would definitely use DeAndre Hopkins. And they've got to do something to get themselves past the divisional round. And I don't know, man. I think that the AFC East is going to be a really, really tough division. I don't think there's any guarantee that the Bills are going to come away with that division, first of all. Because I think Miami, with their defensive improvements, just by adding Vic Fangio, and then you also add Jalen Ramsey to that, they're going to be a tough out. Right. And then you have the New York Jets and they've got a good defense, we believe, but they also add Aaron Rodgers. We'll see what that happens there. I mean, I don't necessarily think the Patriots are as big of a threat, but they're going to be in the mix. Right. So where are the bills going to fall in all of that where you've got your head coach who's now taking back over defensive play calling? Like That's going to be an interesting thing to see. So all that being said, if they can add a weapon like a DeAndre Hopkins, who is such a reliable target, that would definitely help them. My son raised the question earlier this week because he's a big Stephon Diggs fan, and we know that Diggs isn't content for some reason. Most obviously, they don't win. They haven't gotten to the yes. Super Bowl. That's why he went there. Remember the yes. image of him watching the Chiefs celebrate? He used it as a motivation. They've regressed since then. Mm -hmm. How would he feel about DeAndre Hopkins? It helps you win, but if it cuts into your numbers, if it cuts into your opportunities, is the net a positive, or is there a chance that – you know, Stefan has something different he's upset about. Yeah, we're we're in a better position to win, but I'm no longer him. I've got to share him status with DeAndre Hopkins. You just wonder how he would feel about that. That was my son's point, and it would be part of the experiment. It would be part of what we find out as they go forward with Hopkins if they would add him to Stefan Diggs. I think Stefan Diggs just wants to win. I, I, I think he would welcome it. But based on what I've seen from Stefan Diggs, I mean, I just, I, yeah, I, I think that he would welcome it because it, it would help them win. And, and they obviously need something else in that offense, despite the fact that, you know, they're ranked very highly and Ken Dorsey took over that thing and kept them ranked highly, but they still have a turnover issue in part because of their quarterback. Like they need something else to get them on the level, in my opinion, of Cincinnati and Kansas city. Right. So if that's the case, then yeah, you need another dude that can go out there and be a dog and get things on third down. So it's not just, oh, we only have to pay attention to Stefan Diggs on these biggest plays. You, you need to be able to spread things out a little bit, give defenses a little more to think about. Worst case scenario would be Hopkins' presence eats into Stefan Diggs' production and they still don't win. That's yeah, the risk stink, you're taking. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That would be the problem. Yes. And you mentioned the Dolphins are likely going to be better. The Jets are going to be better. The Patriots, who knows? And you look at that schedule point I made when the schedule came out three weeks and one day ago, the idea that they play all those games against AFC West teams, NFC East teams, there's a chance that there's only going to be one that comes out of that division and makes it to the postseason this year. There could be some great teams that get left behind in the AFC East simply because of the schedule rotation. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.